अलवी भाई Hello everyone. I'm Wasif Jamal Khan and I'd love to welcome you all to the episode number 3 of the BFLHA webinar series. And to, on today's episode we are going to be discussing on corporate moral responsibility. For today's episode we have a very very special guest with us today, a great friend for our humble little forum. He has been a legal consultant for DLA Piper from 2015 to 2020. He is the recipient of the 2018 Thomas Reuters Global Innovative Award and for three consecutive years 2018 2019 and 2020 he has been named in the legal 500 in the Asia Pacific region he is a barrister at law and he is an advocate of the Bangladesh Bar Council ladies and gentlemen i'd like to welcome to the BFL Asia webinar series mr alvi hakim wow hi wasif Hello Mr. Alvi Hakim. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you Wasi for the kind introduction. I'm really honored and and pleased to be part of your discussions and I I really think it's a very good thing for very apt um subject matter for for this day and age especially with covid going on. So thank you for having me. No, it's our absolute pleasure. So Mr. Alvi Hakim before we begin Mm-hmm. topic of discussion for the day would you like to say a few words to our viewers to mrs long who's watching to everybody would you like to say a few words please yes absolutely was it so i want to bring in a trend today and i want to bring it bringing it forward so in the world we live today right now the concept of construct mm-hmm. constructive criticism it's very very um prevalent right popular but constructive praise is very oh. underrated So I'd like to praise firstly Absolutely. firstly you Wasif that I've seen you grow up literally and figuratively both uh in your career and and in in through education uh for those of you who don't know Wasif and I went to uh, share the same alumni school William Carey Academy so thank you madam without you I don't think much of this would have been possible so thank you for tuning in it really makes us happy and part of being a team and Wasif thank you so I was going to say that I know you said that you know there's not much prep needed and you know it's a casual discussion but due to my corporate moral responsibility to do justice to my host mm-hmm. to you and to the people who are watching so i did a bit of research um i've seen both your uh previous two webinars both of them were very very mm-hmm. good i mean very very well spoken and as i was telling you before that I think the only not criticism advice I would give is more people should hear about it you know so thank you very much what's <laughs> it so and and also I want to sh- give a shout out to Sabiha who's your co 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 founder right of BF BFLHA she's also a former yeah, TV scholar as well so I've worked I've, I've had the privilege of working closely with both of you so keep it up keep going and we're here to support you and thank you everyone for watching Thank you everyone for watching. So Mr. Hakim, yes sir. Let's start our discussion now. Mhm. Sure. So in the world we live in right now, mm-hmm. it is by the masses it, it is commonly perceived that a company is beyond having moral responsibility towards society, moral responsibility towards the masses of the masses of people. It it usually you know accrues its revenues from right so i want to ask you first what do you think is corporate moral responsibility wow that's an excellent question asif so i want to slightly change what you say in the world we used to live in right 
the world we live in right now is a different world from the world we had um, four months ago, right? Especially with the COVID stricken world today with the global pandemic going on, there's a lot of um, mm -hmm. soul searching for a lot of companies and, and, and a lot of institutions that used to function in a way that one would say that many companies, one would say that they only care about the corporate money, like the profit side of things and not the social moral responsibility mm -hmm. of it. So to, to tackle that, mm -hmm. I would first start with breaking down the three words, right? What is corporate? Right. What is moral? And what is the responsibility mm -hmm. that we talk about, right? So in the modern mm -hmm. world today, and I know like I've done a bit of uh, notes as well, so bear with me, Wasif, and, and stop me whenever you can. But of my suggestion is that, look, uh -huh. I can only speak for the legal profession, right? For me as a lawyer, I think that mm -hmm. when people come to lawyers, they don't want someone who memorizes law and just tells them, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone can do that. Anyone right. can Google and, and, and memorize the law and tell you. People don't come to you for that. Mm -hmm. Corporations and people come for you for advice to solve your problem, right? Your problem solving skills. So there's a lot of, so, mm -hmm. so the three corporate moral responsibility really functions in every case that you do as a lawyer, whether you're a litigator, mm -hmm. corporate lawyer, family lawyer, whatever it is, right? So I think mm -hmm. the good news is that um, with the world coming in today, a very important thing is um, emotional intelligence, EQ. Now, for right. lawyers, you have a certain level of IQ that unless you had it, you wouldn't pass mm -hmm. the law degree, et cetera, right? It's a very difficult scenario. Mm -hmm. like. Difficult subject for, for all. Um, it's not rocket science, mm -hmm. but it's still difficult to, to pass, right? So for that, but now, right. now the world, with the world going forward, AI is taking over, right? AI is taking over the legal market as well. And a lot of the jobs that you had, that you had to use IQ, especially for young lawyers, right? Especially for young lawyers mm -hmm. that we used to hire for like legal assistants, et cetera, who would do like due diligence, research work, contract work that sort of job will die soon in the next five years. It'll just yeah. die off because we would use AI. And I, I can say that in my five years with DLA, like firms like DLA, we used to have an AI for our own firm. We used to have an AI for our mm -hmm. own firm where we would save costs by not hiring juniors and use AI to do the work. So where does a lawyer's uh, capabilities come in? The important thing is the human touch, right? The human touch, mm -hmm. The empathy to understand your your client, to understand what they're saying, what mm -hmm. they want, and also to question three things, right? Three things you have to realize right. is what you want to do, what you can do, mm -hmm. and what you should do. So for that, any mm -hmm. any profession, professional, right? Young professional, it's not just for lawyers. You first have to have a vision, right? What's your vision of what you want to be? Mm -hmm. Then you you focus on that vision and then, and then you think about what are the attainable goals that I can have through that vision that I see myself mm -hmm. in, right? So for underneath mm -hmm. that vision, then you will um, you will have to think of these three questions, what you can do, what you should do, and what you intend on doing, right? So Firstly, I'd like to start off, mm -hmm. and those words have the underlying principles of corporate moral responsibility. Does that make sense? Am I mm -hmm. talking too fast? Absolutely. Please stop me if I do. No. Right? <laughs> okay. So first, I'd like to talk about what you can do, right? What you can do. What you can do is your skills, what you're good at. If you're if you're a lawyer, are you good at law? Are you good at analyzing? Are you mm -hmm. good at Are you good at going to court? Are you good at analyzing and fixing and drafting and contracts and all that, like the practical corporate side, mm -hmm. right? So that is what we can mm -hmm. do. That is the corporate side of corporate moral responsibility, right? And and that's also the practical financial. Yep. That's where you, that's your bread and butter. That's where you will earn according to your work. If you're not good, eventually it'll mm -hmm. catch up to you and eventually people will call you out. That's a fact. I've seen it everywhere. Right. Every time I personally have slacked off and I am human, right? Like sometimes if my work isn't good, Absolutely. my colleagues used to be some of the best people I've ever met, but they would tell you 
that Alvin mm-hmm. Lowe, your work is not up to standard. You got to do better. That's just how it is. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. that's how it is, right? So that is the what you right. the corporate side, right? what you can do, and the financial side. So so these things. So so corporate covers that bit, right? Uh, mm-hmm. The second part is what you want to do, right? So what you want to do is the responsibility side of it, right? The future of where you oh. want to be, how responsible you sh- should you be, should you want to be, and what responsibilities do you want to take on in the future? So the underlying principle is that's for the future, right? What, you, what you're building on. And this is very important because it affects your your longevity, longevity of your career, right? How you want mm-hmm. to be perceived by your peers and by your employers and by the buyer clients is how you set yourself in a goal. Because uh, in the modern world, mm-hmm. um, we all are a brand name, Wasif, right? You personally, Wasif, mm-hmm. you are a brand name. Alvi Hakim, I'm a brand name. What I say, or what I mm-hmm. do, what I post on social media, reflects that brand of mine. So young professionals need to understand, right. realize, and, and question what brand, what do they want to be known as? Do you want to be known yeah. as that guy who, you know, says some silly things and behaves badly with people who misunderstand you? Do you want to be that person who people want to come to for a good, honest discussion, good, honest conversation? What do you want to do, right? And that affects your future. So that affects the responsibility side of a young professional, right? And now the third one is what you should do. Now this, I cannot stress enough. This is the most important bit that you should consider, the moral side, the morality, right? Corporate moral responsibility, Mm -hmm. right? The moral side Mm -hmm. is questioning what you should be doing, right? From an ethical standpoint, Mm -hmm. based on your internal convictions versus your professional convictions, right? And both doesn't always go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Ethics and your morale. Like when I was working in, uh, as a very young lawyer in Myanmar, there was a time when I had to represent, say, a group of clients or, 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 or a group of individuals whose business or whose work mm-hmm. did not entirely align with my global view of how I see the world, right? Of, of what mm-hmm. I say. I'm just saying an example, like say, I personally believe in environmental conservation and being responsible, you know, with what we do with the environment. But say, if I was put in a place where I had to represent an oil company, right? There is a conflict, right? What you, your internal conviction versus your professional conviction. So those are the things mm-hmm. that, that lawyers should think about and the ethical things, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, the, and the moral morality really affects your mind. Your, your mental health, mm-hmm. right? Your, your, your mental, spiritual side, right? So the morality bit yeah. helps your mental side. The corporate bit helps your practical financial side. And the, ref- mm-hmm. and the responsibility affects your future and long-term stability of your career. Now, none of it matters mm-hmm. though, when you compromise morality because that lacks mm-hmm. integrity, right? Now, a lot of people say, like, and I know, and I'm not trying to criticize anyone here. I'm just saying overall in general, in our country, in any country that I've worked with, especially as you're going back to your question, that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, why do you have to just earn money? Why do you have to be moral or responsible? You just do what you do, right? Earn money, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But if you lack the moral side, then, then, then you lack, it compromises your integrity as a person. And it will catch up with you mm-hmm. in a mental way. Like in the future, what are the convictions? What, what type of person do you want to be? What type of person do you want to portray yourself to your kids, to your peers, to your juniors, people who look up to you, right? Mm-hmm. And it's sort, of, it's sort of, I like to use it as an example, a metaphor. Like say, your, your, if your career is your car, right? Then you yeah. are the driver. You're the one who's driving it. The people who mm-hmm. you're employed, like your clients, your, your employers, etc., are the passengers who would direct you to go where you want, mm-hmm. right? Where you can or where you go. But then if you mm-hmm. drive badly, right? If you're not a safe driver, mm-hmm. would people go on your car, in your car? 
right? I mean, absolutely not. Mentality I see is, oh, you know, we're all humans. I mean, we all make mistakes. I think ten, six out of ten times I'm usually moral and ethical, but four times, eh. But then, no, that's not it. Like, I know human beings are prone to errors, but then does a pilot mm -hmm. try to land a plane every single time he lands and says, mm, well, I mean, six out of ten times I land safely, but like four times I could mess up. No, you have the mentality that you will not mess up. And if you do, then you face the consequences. Mm -hmm. But your mindset should be that, right? So that's why morality is very important when you want to be a well-rounded person. So the idea is to have a balance, like the corporate moral responsible professional. And that mm -hmm. is the internal bit of your corporate moral responsibility. And that will reflect on an, on an what do you call, a, um, a macro level in companies that you work with. Mm -hmm. right? So the company will reflect yeah. the, the collective idea of how people see or see business. So that's why it's first important to internalize mm -hmm. and understand these things that I said, the corporal social responsible part, and then implement it in the company. So that's, I'm sorry uh, if I talked too long, was it, but does that make Not sense? At all. <laughs> yep, it makes absolute sense to me. And uh -huh. you didn't speak too long at all. It's our pleasure once again. But I have a question for you. You said yes, you said when you were speaking about the morality aspect of corporate right. responsibility, you said when, say, as a corporate lawyer, you're going to have to represent an oil company. Yes, mm. it's it'll be a clash between your professional convictions and your moral convictions. You said. Mm -hmm. So, as a corporate lawyer, or as somebody representing a massive corporation that has its network all around the world. Mm -hmm. What is the environmental ethic threshold for a corporation? Should it be set by the government? Should it be set by organizations, you know, consisting of other corporations or who will supervise it, who will regulate it and mm -hmm. whether or not it will be an object of discussion or it is something right. that just pushed away. That's a brilliant question, Wasif. I'm really uh, impressed by your uh, analysis of the whole situation. I think, so there are a few aspects to this, right? And and so mm -hmm. when you mentioned, should the government bring in, should, should the companies themselves enforce it, who should bring forth, right? Mm -hmm. Now that depends mm -hmm. on your economic and political and social perspective of how do you want a big government? Do you want a smaller government? Do you want capitalism? What kind of rules and regulations and barriers do you need to set on like rampant capitalism is not yeah. good, but also com like, like, you know, so North Korea style control is not good either, right? In, a, in an economy. The mm -hmm. idea is to balance it out, right? I personally, if you want me, I like, I, I, I want to yeah. look at it in a pragmatic sense. So I look at it in a conservative pragmatic sense now don't get me wrong don't like when i say conservative i don't mean the traditional conservative idea that you think of in say u.s politics right conservative and liberal no i'm saying conservatism is looking at things in a pragmatic way i can be a liberal but i can be a liberal conservative right and taking things mm -hmm. in a pragmatic conservative way so from my perspective and 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 people can defer and i'm sure there's a lot of very highly educated people who know better than I do. But from my personal conviction, I think there needs to be a balance, a bit of balance on both. I think companies mm -hmm. and I think capitalism, right? The market capitalism actually mm -hmm. rules the trend in the market. Like you see that the trends that these companies are being called out, right? They're being called out for being mm -hmm. insensitive, this and that. Because of the free market of the, of the collective consciousness, Companies are forced to mm -hmm. change their perspective in how they advertise and how they like, how they do their PR. For now, the mm -hmm. current perspective, the trend, if you look at the trend, I think the callousness of like, a, say, a traditional oil company or a company, fracking companies that they don't care about mm -hmm. the environment, but not, they are going, they are already mm -hmm. dinosaurs. They're going to die off, right? I think. Because... Mm -hmm. The world, even now more, they want, with the pandemic going on, they want to look at the world in a way that they understand that, look, I mean, if the world doesn't exist, none of this matters, right? So I, I'm just going to use, if you let me, I'm just going to use a Game of Thrones reference. 
it's sort of like when the white walkers came in right all the individuals like mm -hmm. they're all going to die if they don't band together and do something right so now i think the mm -hmm. trend towards is trend is going towards even companies that always even like, you know represented unhealthy lifestyle or products that are bad for humans or the world they are trying to revamp their their image their pr to make it sustainable and to make the consumers accept them in a moral social moral mm -hmm. high right so that's why i think the mm -hmm. trend that's going it's very important for young professionals to actually understand it and be ahead of the curve because that is i'm telling you that is mm -hmm. where the world is going right and i'll give you an example okay so um Please. i used to be in the business and human rights global team for dla when i used to work mm -hmm. there and uh, we used to have conversations every month you know talking about the global trends so one of the interesting mm -hmm. things that we talked about right is so in France, and I, I need to do more research, and and we can we can answer people afterwards and after doing more research. But from what I understand, France was thinking of enacting a law, right, where say a big French conglomerate, headquartered in France, they have their sweatshop factory, say in Bangladesh, right? They have their sweatshop in Bangladesh, and there is a layer of subsidiary companies protecting them from any inhuman or or human rights violation in you know in bangladesh too going back to the parent company in france right because if you sue mm -hmm. like we sue in bangladesh for you know whatever that they weren't being giving proper you know um human mm -hmm. rights proper protection to their workers there's only limited you can do you can't hit the main company right the mother the main sort of the the holding company in france but now, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. they're thinking, or they have already, this was a few months ago, so I need to make sure that if they have already or not, they're enacting a law that says that, say, say a French company has, an off has a factory in Bangladesh, there's gross violation of yeah. human rights in Bangladesh. From Bangladesh, we can sue directly to the, to the parent company in France, and the directors mm -hmm. would be criminally liable for the actions of their subsidiary, right? So that mm -hmm. protection that used to be there is not there anymore. So what this trend would do is force companies, even if they don't believe in, you know, in corporate moral responsibility, et cetera, they would be forced to do legal due diligence beforehand and ensure that their factories in Bangladesh or in Vietnam or in places like these, that these guys are doing things properly. So that's, that's, the role that's where you see the government that's an example of where the government actually stepped in tweaked a little bit forcing the the the, the financial players the, the the commercial entities to change and amend their law so i think it's a balance right you need you need companies oh. inter internally doing it for their own pr purposes forget it even if they don't like it they should do it they are doing it and secondly that the government may be taking steps to sort of tweak it so that to ensure that to, to make them, you know, force them to go the other way and ensure human rights. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, sort of? Yes, I'll be right. that does answer my question. But I have a counter question now for you. Sure. So, so we understand that in order to implement our regulatory standards to ascertain certain level of ethics, you mm -hmm. know, it would require intervention by one body or the other. Mm -hmm. Right. So my question to you for is other than being a gross human rights violation, which would require to like, you know, completely reform how the corporation operates, mm -hmm. uh, would would frequent interventions affect productivity of the company? Do you think? What is I your... think I think, see, that's also it's a subjective one, right? Depending on if the intervention, if why they're intervening, are they intervening because there's there's such uh, because the, the 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 what do you call the mental state of the employees are so bad in their institution that it's affecting their productivity. Would they would they be have would mm -hmm. they have to do it then, or is it that you know? So it depends on also management structure. Like if you want to micromanage, if you want to macromanage. I personally think that mm -hmm. if it comes from the top, if they set the rule and there's an enforcement body that actually does their work and make sure that you know they shut mm -hmm. down on places where there's gross violation of morality or ethics, then that should be okay. Like think about mm -hmm. it as a lawyer, 
um, when I pass the Chittagong, when I pass the Bangladesh bar, the bar council has a set of rules and ethics for lawyers to conduct themselves with, right? And if we violate mm -hmm. them, then we might be disbarred. So, I mean, the, the, the bar association mm -hmm. doesn't poke their nose in every single day in my practice to make sure I do it, but there is that overwhelming mm -hmm. umbrella of law. So I think that works better because it gives people freedom mm -hmm. and flexibility to go on their business, keeping in mind that there is mm -hmm. a source of check and balance to their actions, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Does that help? <laughs> okay. Yes, that does answer my question. I'll do it. Thank you very much. No so, problem, sir. Moving on to the next question for you. Uh -huh. um, I'll do right. Yeah. How do you think corporations could be held morally responsible for their actions? I know we were just discussing how to supervise them. Yes. Mm. See, mm. we are all aware that a company is a persona ficta. It's a entity, but right. it's not a natural entity like ourselves. Mm. So what you can do with a human being is when they do something which is morally, um, what is the word? If they do something which is morally, you know, it's questionable, let's say. Yeah, mm. you can, you know, there, you can take certain punitive measures against them. There's codified law using yeah. which you can right. try them. Right. Right. Company does it. What can you do? Well, How I think, you, uh, yeah, ascertain that. do you mean what, what more can you do uh, where already, according to Companies Act in most countries, there are, there are issues where like, you know, piercing the corporate veil, right? That there are measures taken mm -hmm. by the government if the company goes into administration, things like that. So do you mean about what more that could be done because the current system is not working? Or do you mean that we should enforce the already the, the legal system that's already there make the enforcement better. Which which one would you would you mean when you're? What I mean is, say we were hypothetically discussing if there, if we were to regulate businesses mm -hmm. to a certain level of mm -hmm. environmental ethics. Say mm -hmm. we set the threshold here, yes, and an action of theirs reached there. Right. So in that case, how can we hold? How can we take punitive measures against a company? I think I think from 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 the system that's already there. There's you know when you register the company, you have to in Bangladesh you have to go to uh, depending on the type of questions like RJSC will regulate. You have to every year you have a certain thing, certain bit of things that you have to report to them every year on who the directors are. Are you having your AGM, etc. To basically make mm -hmm. sure that the companies run properly. But obviously, as we both know. Uh, that there are a lot of ways around and by use of shell companies, this and that, and people, there's a lot of loopholes around. Mm -hmm. where it, it is in a, in, a, in a gray area, right? But now it's a very mm -hmm. difficult question because um, it goes back to how much regulation do you want from the government and how much flow, how much do you want the market to just do what it does and correct itself mm -hmm. according to the market trend. Clearly, Mm -hmm. Fully on market trend doesn't work because that brings global crash, as you saw with the, with the financial crash. That's that's capitalism on mm -hmm. steroids, right? Without any checks and balances, you do, <laughs> and then it goes down. Mm -hmm. And then clearly, if you use um, regimes like, say, I, I, North Korea. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about top of my head the most sort of in the world right now. Say, mm -hmm. with North Korea, etc. Then that's also obviously detrimental to business. So. Again, I think I think what mm -hmm. we should do is, and another thing, Wasif, as you know, companies yeah. have their own separate legal entity, right? According to the law, the of company course. can be sued, they cannot be sued. So the company is a legal person according to the law, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have a the limited liability, you have you it's it's a separate legal entity, right? Like a human being is a mm -hmm. separate legal entity under the law. What the company does, they could be liable as a company, and the directors that act on behalf of the company are the ones that face liability, mm -hmm. but that's limited liability. I think I think with that scenario, so they are in theory held liable, but then also I think there needs to be mm -hmm. a bit more they need to question a bit more. I think I think um sometimes a regulatory body, whether it be an elected government 
body or in a situation or like um say uh bgma right like like an organization of the company mm -hmm. they could set up self correcting measures and then you know that so that you know mm -hmm. it's i mean the government needs help right they can't just sit around and just you know try and look into every there are billions of companies in the world i mean wow. and 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 it's almost mm -hmm. difficult to sort of uh regulate all of them so i think there has to be a bit more effort from within the businessmen and also from the also businessmen coming to the government as well like collaboration with the government mm -hmm. i think is is a very important sort of mm -hmm. uh aspect that needs to be looked at and i think it will reach i think uh, the example i gave with france i think that's the best example of how the government and how the stakeholders as you said the key stakeholders mm -hmm. are playing a part in self regulating each other you know mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's the cancel, like there's a alleged cancel culture, which is the society's modern society's way of sort of calling out companies who are not behaving that way. And there's an issue with that also, if that's mm -hmm. not related, but that's a different question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. So, Mr. Hakim, on yes, behalf sir. of our forum, we have a question for you to address mm -hmm. for the general audience, mm -hmm. which is. I know what CSR is. Mm -hmm. What exactly is CMR? CMR is the twin brother please, of CSR. Be kind enough to, yeah. <laughs> please, go CMR on. is the twin brother of CSR. So, okay. Social responsibility. So the word social responsibility means our our collective responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that our actions do not affect someone else in the society, negatively affect the person mm -hmm. in the society. So it's a social collaboration mm -hmm. part, right? Within the social mm -hmm. responsibility bit, the underlying idea is the morality bit, right? That I mentioned, right? Moral mm -hmm. side of it. So if, you're, if you don't take care of the moral aspect of it, then you would fail mm -hmm. in being a socially responsible, right? I think it's just semantics where mm -hmm. social responsibility is sort of the wider sort of, a lot of times things, things are say, okay, so your social responsibility is a wider factor. So a lot of times maybe your personal morality would stop you from doing this, but also your social responsibilities want you, expect you to do a certain thing, okay? For example, mm -hmm. I can personally on my, moral, on my moral ethics say, I don't wanna wear a mask, right? I just, that's my personal opinion. That's my moral conviction. I mm -hmm. don't want to wear a mask. But my social responsibility would be to wear a mask, right? Because that affects someone else, right? That affects other people because of my moral. Like, so I think I think if if that makes sense, that social is the wider umbrella under which morality comes in. So I think corporate moral responsibility could be said as from an individual perspective, as a young professional, and that collectively is how the company acts, and that's the CSR. Corporate social responsibility. Does that make sense? Yes. That does make sense. Thank you for that. We have another question from the audience for you. Would you like to sure. take it? Yes, absolutely. Please. He said, A. Ripat said, I have a question on today's topic to the respected guest, and that is environmental, social, corporate governance, and Economic measures, does all of this measure corporate sustainability or corporate social responsibility? Please give your opinion regarding this matter. I think that's a very good question, A.H. Rifat. I really appreciate your question. And this gives me hope that, that young professionals today who are students are asking these questions because these are the questions that you need to ask. Um, uh, Wasi, if you don't mind putting the, take, putting the question up again so that I can follow. Okay. So firstly, see, environmental, social, corporate governance and economic measures are the actions, overlying actions that one does, right? One can take, like, like the idea of corporate governance is how you govern your internal company. How social, gov like environmental is what we're doing to affect the environment. Social is, as I explained, what, what our social responsibility is, right? So all of these mm -hmm. factors need to incorporate 
corporate social and moral responsibility within them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That if I'm doing a corporate, like if I'm taking a um, corporate uh, environmentally conscious decision, right, as an entity, I need to think about and, mm -hmm. and, and take into consideration my corporate moral responsibility, as I explained, the three factors, right? And then mm -hmm. I need to sit with the others and collectively we have our corporate social responsibility and then we act mm -hmm. on it. So basically what I'm saying is you should have these ideas internally and then you take in corporate governments, environment matters. So to be a well-rounded person, mm -hmm. not just look at one aspect, right? If I'm just looking at corporate, then I just want profit. I don't care about the rest, right? If I just want, again, if, mm -hmm. if it's just moral, then, you know, that is an issue because um, if that's the, the, the underlying theme, then that gives a chance to morally shun people who do not agree with your ideas, right? See, to answer that question, mm -hmm. it's a very, I was thinking the other day, and I'm sure you've read this before, I've written about it, but I think essentially in society, right, mm -hmm. we have uh, accepted two huge lies. Okay, in society right mm -hmm. now. One is that in order, if you, if somebody thinks differently to you, if somebody has a different perspective to you, if somebody has a, mm -hmm. if somebody's lifestyle doesn't match yours or their beliefs doesn't match yours, then you have to hate them or you have to shun them, right? Second, mm -hmm. those of you who share your personal views and, and you love them and you follow them, you, is, is that mm -hmm. those of you who, those are the people who you love you follow them and support them like like a blind person without thinking of what they're saying like say what if i like you but then if you say something that i think is is morally ethically uh it's called yeah, that my morality is compromised then i don't have to like blatantly mm -hmm. just disregard that and support you i can ask because you don't have to mm -hmm. compromise your convictions to be compassionate to others, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very important uh, aspect that one has to consider while considering corporate governance, etc. Because you have to work with different people, you have to have a level head again, mm -hmm. the pragmatic view of trying to work together to get the best solution instead of just pushing your own agenda, right? Because if you're going to constantly mm -hmm. bash, uh, say, an oil company, right? Obviously, they're doing like. Mm -hmm. say, and being irresponsible with the environment, let's just say that. But then you have mm -hmm. to, when you're trying to cancel them, right? You have to think about the, the thousands mm -hmm. and hundreds and millions of families that rely on that and people's education that rely on the money that they pay. So you have to think about the whole mm -hmm. perspective. So I think that's that's sort of like an idea that, and it's a very good question. And I think we can talk about this for hours. And I'd love to, I mean, please ask mm -hmm. him if he wants to, do further discussion than like to message me or message you, and then we can talk more in detail one on one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he's watching. I'm sure he'll ask his follow up question or any comments he has to make. But uh, Mr. Hakim, I have another question from you. This time is from Ms. Tasmia Hawk, and yeah. the question is a question to the respective guests, Mr. Hakim. Maybe this has already been discussed in the beginning. Sorry, I missed the first five minutes. To put it in plain language, what is the difference between legality and morality? Right. What should companies keep in mind when drafting their internal CSR policy? I'll keep it on, keep the yes, comment yes. on the question for you to. Yes, while I try to wrap my brains around the brilliance of the question by Tashmiya Hu. Thank you, Tashmiya. Thank you, Ms. Tashmiya Hu. Uh, pleasure to see you're tuning in. And no, I think that's a great question. I think for me, okay, so legality. The difference is morality is your, it could be internal morality, right? In a, in a micro level, mm -hmm. my, my set of beliefs and what I think is right and wrong. And legality, mm -hmm. legality doesn't, uh, something that's legal doesn't necessarily have to reflect my moral standpoint on it, right? My morality on it, right? Like say 200 years ago, slavery was legal, but was it moral? It was always immoral, mm -hmm. but it was legal. Right. So there is a legality mm -hmm. aspect to it, but the morality part was they don't always intertwine. Right. So that's a very good question because I know Tashmia, Miss Tashmia, she has um, she works for for large 
um, regional international law firm and does practices corporate law. And she, I'm sure that in her line of work, mm -hmm. she has to face a lot of these issues while as a corporate lawyer, while drafting a constitution, while drafting a, a memorandum of article for the company, etc. Mm -hmm. How do you really think about what mm -hmm. should companies keep in mind, right? I think when you think of CSR project, I think firstly is if you look at a VIN diagram, right, you have three different aspects, right? You have the legality, you have the morality, and you have the responsibility. I think what the ideal spot is when all the three converge into one, using the VIN diagram, right? So to draft something that's appropriate to A, that has to be legal in the country, obviously, enforceable legally, that has to be represent the, 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 the ethos of the company, what it represents, what its moral side of it is and also its responsibility to its society what it owes to the society right because a company when it comes in it really affects the local society whether in a good way or a bad way right so all three aspects has to be considered when they're drafting it and yes so a lot of times legality and versus morality is a big issue but usually if it's something like you can't do anything illegal right you can't draft anything that's illegal in the country that it's based in. So a lot of times what happens is you have to adhere to the legality side of things. But in terms of enforcement, mm -hmm. use subjective morality while approaching the legal aspects of your CSR project. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I hope that made sense to Apu. That made sense to me. Okay. So, <laughs> Thank you. So, so, Mr. Hakim, can we move on to you? yet another question, this time from me to you? Sure, sure, please. In your opinion or in your experience as a corporate lawyer, you being in your experience as a member of an international um, organization, do you think a, cor a corporation's moral responsibility extends to providing say perhaps financial support to the people or is it only restricted to just um, exercising uh, sustainable positive practices within themselves which is it do they have to extend out of the company's reach to you know provide support training whatever that yeah. or do you think it's just within themselves to make sure that their practices are sustainable and positive see that's another just going back to what Tashmia Ms. Tashmia Hawk said that um, that depends on what their internal legality and morality standpoint is. So say if they're, if they're required by the government, like the legal, whichever legal, whichever country they're in, jurisdiction they're in, if there's a legality aspect to it that they have to do it, then they have to do it, mm -hmm. right? So that they have to do. But then also you mentioned about personally give financial assistance. So assistance can be given in many ways right you can give it in a financial structure what i'm saying is whichever mm -hmm. truly reflects the long-term goal of the company that makes financial sense mm -hmm. as well as social and moral sense now a lot of times mm -hmm. many companies maybe think in the short term right that oh yeah we're not gonna you know we're mm -hmm. gonna get the bonuses we don't care about the people thank you dash what she said makes sense thank you but <laughs> to continue with that, that what companies don't realize is that the people, its people is its main asset, right? Without its people, there's no product. Without its product, there's no company. And without no company, then you're broke, right? It doesn't. So I think the, the, the problem with the world is, and they, a lot of companies got called out for it, especially in the, in the COVID period. You can see good practice examples of companies, how they reacted to COVID. You can see yeah. terrible practices of companies, how they reacted to it. And then you can see that mm -hmm. there's a connection between the companies that have not given care of their people and have, you know, not treated them well. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who are probably in trouble right now because the, mm -hmm. they didn't think in the long run that how their actions would affect the consumers buying their products. So the company has to realize that mm -hmm. no matter how good your product is, you have to be covert, like you have to pay attention to how you socially are responsible with with your audience right so it's a, it's a thin line i think mm -hmm. i personally think 
I think scholarships, I think training session between the, the companies. And I can say this, right? And, and, and in my five years with DLA, and also I worked two years with DFDL, I have to say with both the companies, they're all both international, mm -hmm. but DLA is a large global company and DFDL is a large mm -hmm. regional company. But both companies mm -hmm. always made sure that they took care of their, of their staff. Right. And I, I do need mm -hmm. to, I think I should mention this, that like my managing partner, Mr. Peter Shelford, I'd always be thankful to him. He was so gracious mm -hmm. in the way when the lockdown happened and how he made sure that each and every employee is safe. Each and every employee is paid mm -hmm. each, like, you know, to make sure that we are well taken care of. And, and so my, it coincided with the lockdown. And even after I left DLA, Peter still said that whatever you need, take your time, we're there to help. So now, because of his actions, he represented his his company, right? And because of that kindness and because of that, the way that he acted responsibly, I will forever remember him in a good way. And now I'm speaking to you and the audience that are hearing will hear the good things and good governance practice that he's done. So I think it, it, it's very important that like companies take care of their people because the people are the main assets, man. And, and without the people, companies are nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, I think that's sort of like where I stand on that question. Yeah, I think that's fair. So anyway, Mr. Haki, we have another question. Mm -hmm. This time from Ms. Wafi Harifat. She right. wants to know, is CMR a subject of corporate law? That's a good question. It's a very good question. Well, that depends on your league, like institution where you're studying law. Um, for me, well, I went to law school in Cardiff University for my undergrad LLB. So we didn't have, we had for our first year, we had this uh, just intro, intro to law, which covered corporate moral responsibility, etc. these matters. Um, if you take mm -hmm. jurisprudence in law school, that really covers like the the ethical legal ethical background of 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 when constructing a law how you should take in um i'm sure every law student knows about lord denning and and the idea of equity right equitable so mm -hmm. common law system the equitable rights that's i mean it's not codified but it does give an idea of cmr but cmr in general like mm -hmm. as CMR, i haven't seen it in my university as a separate topic mm -hmm. but i've seen Elements of it taught to us in every, especially in company company law. And I took environment mm -hmm. in my third year. So in, environment law really heavily focused on your social mm -hmm. corporate responsibility. But I think that's a very good mm -hmm. question because I think uh, institutions should uh, put that in, in whichever profession you're working in. doesn't matter if you're doing BBA, mm -hmm. MBA law, or whatever it is. If you're an engineer or whatever it is, I think there should be a side to it. And, and I think uh, there's legal ethics, obviously, if you do the bar, etc. There's a whole topic about that, like legal ethics. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's there, you know? So, mm -hmm. so Mr. Hakim? Mm -hmm. Yes. In your opinion yes. and in your experience, what is, what, how, how would you encourage corporations to adopt sustainable business and corporate practices? We understand that forcing corporations to take certain measures is the walking of eggshells egg because it's a sensitive matter. You don't want to disrupt their business. You don't want to disrupt their contribution to your economy. But you do want them to adopt sustainable corporate practices. How do you encourage them to do that from a governance okay. perspective? Right. So it, it has to be a three-pronged approach, right? Corporate, moral, and then responsibility, right? So it, mm -hmm. I think it should be subjective in the way the leadership in a company, right? Each person reacts mm -hmm. to a certain thing and responds to a certain way of talking or, or, or putting it out there than any other. So say if it's like a very corporate-minded, profit-minded person, right, running the company, mm -hmm. what needs to be done is to reach out to him through the corporate side of things, right? To say that, look... Mm -hmm beneficial it, it's beneficial in a monetary sense in the long term for your company if you take this vision and 
enact a socially responsible or morally responsible company as explained in the whole mm-hmm. thing why it's important right so then the mm-hmm. person is more likely maybe to respond to that and enact their mm-hmm. corporate governance like that now and also then it depends on on on, on how you want to talk about the, the the morality part of it right the leadership needs mm-hmm. to talk about the morality to their employees right employees should be moral mm-hmm. employees should be loyal employees should be should have integrity should not steal right so that's a moral side of it right so and then the responsibility is a collective responsibility as a result of both mm-hmm. sides of their corporate and moral uh, responsibilities does that make sense mm-hmm. so i think that's how I, and and it's oversimplification of it obviously but i think there there mm-hmm. needs to be more advocacy in this more mm-hmm. understanding of this there i think is a is a common misconception especially in developing worlds mm. that pro bono or work that is sustainable in the long run is whatever that's that's that doesn't make mm. money what i want is money now and i look at short term ah. and if you realize this is the type of approach that leads to a vicious cycle that keeps that mm-hmm. pulls back developing um markets from being a developed market because of the short term thinking mm-hmm. so i think long term thinking would be mm-hmm. my absolute go to and um what do you call advice to everyone when they're doing mm-hmm. governance mm-hmm. yep thank you mr alzia kim that does answer my question so um see we're reaching the 1 hour mark in a few minutes Uh-huh. So unfortunately we're almost at the end of this session but right. before you go I have one more question for you if you do not mind please please okay so my question to you is what are the aspects in which companies what are the aspects in which companies can exercise their CMR I know you spoke about how they deal with their how they deal with their employees how they deal with those who are associating with the company in a business mm-hmm. uh, point of view but from a company corporate governance point of view which are the aspects say you're up you're in charge of a corporation mm-hmm. that is the standard of cmr being exercised by a formation corporation is uh low let's say okay so if you were in a governance position in within that corporation what are the what are the aspects that you're going to begin work with in order to increase your cmr output okay that's a very good question so if mm-hmm. say i if i did um have my own law firm one day say i'm 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 partner mm-hmm. of firm, right and how it's i would reality, one day right how, how i would take on board that's a very good question was i think um i personally would take on board i would put focus on a few things that people don't realize i think i would focus on mental health of our of my employees mm-hmm. first and foremost i think that's just criminally neglected like criminally neglected not intentionally either we just don't realize right i think mental health mm-hmm. one i want to make sure that my employees are happy even if they're not, mm-hmm. not happy i want to make sure that they're not upset to a certain to 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 such a degree that their output is they they they're, they're not mm-hmm. they're not profitable that's a corporate side of things right financial strictly mm-hmm. financial side from the moral side i don't want to be the person that makes someone else's life bad this person is working hard for mm-hmm. me to make more money for me and to make more more you know to work together right why mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense to me to push them or bully them i think bullying is such a big so mental health aspect right the bullying part you know and and i hate to say this in our south asian culture southeast asian culture there's such mm-hmm. a big segregation of junior senior blah 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 this and that senior mm-hmm. just because by chance by balance of probabilities i was i came to this world say 365 days before you came does not give mm-hmm. me the right in a professional sense to treat you or to act 
in a different way to you because you were born after me, right? So mm -hmm. bullying, mental health, I think uh, I would base it on meritocracy. I think companies should base their, mm -hmm. their, um, their outlook on meritocracy, but also balance it with EQ. As I said, empathy. Empathy mm -hmm. really is the most important thing for like, you know, mm -hmm. clients, nobody wants to either work with someone who's unpleasant or work for someone mm -hmm. or work, work with someone who's unpleasant. And I think clients mm -hmm. and everyone would realize that whatever person you are. So empathy is a big factor because everyone with high IQ has high EQ, but not everyone with high EQ mm -hmm. has high IQ. So you have to think of it that way, right? right. So that perspective, mm -hmm. I think, uh, focus on empathy. So mental health, empathy, and I mean, integrity is also a very good Important, important factor, and, and and I know you. Mm -hmm. I sound like oh, you know, the moral police saying that, but I'm telling you this. Look, from my corporate experience, I've seen that when in places mm -hmm. where these things are well nurtured and checked, the output of of your mm -hmm. employees and people are, I can almost guarantee you, are going to be much better than, in the long term at least, than companies that don't mm -hmm. take care of this and only focus on the corporate side. Right, so I think that would be my mm -hmm. my key focus. So mental health, um, uh, what was it? Mental health, um, uh, looking like uh, bullying, mental health, empathy, mm -hmm. and obviously a certain level of excellence. Right, little things, man. Like people mm -hmm. don't respond to emails. Why don't you respond to emails? There's a corporate culture. Young young professionals, I've seen. You send an email. It takes three days to draft one and reply. No. As a lawyer, your client wants you to know, wants to know that you're on it. Even if you don't have an answer to it, you reply immediately mm -hmm. saying, hey, you know, I'm on it. I mean, and there's no excuse because in the modern world, we all have our, our phones, right? We all answer people mm -hmm. instant messages. So why can't you just do that with emails? And see, that's another thing that my boss, my former boss taught me when I first came in. Mm -hmm. And I'm incorporating that into my, if I ever run in corporation, that would be it. So any of you who's interested, just let me know. Um, I'm taking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But I think I hope that answers your question. Yes, that does answer my question, Mr. Alvi Hakim. So we have some comments for you. First of all, yes, there you sir. Go. Congratulations, yes, sir. Mr. Hakim. You did it quite well. Thank you from the senior Hakims. Oh, there that's you go. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I think yep. I think a lot Thank of my for being with us the whole time. I think a lot of my personal outlook on business, etc., comes from what I've seen growing up from my father. So thank you mm -hmm. for that. You know? So just a shout out. We also have Mrs. Long once again agreeing with Mr. Hakim. So there you go with that. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, you Madam, for watching. Yep. For being with us the whole time. Yep. So, so Alvivai, what we're going to do is what yep. we usually do before we end the show. I want to mm -hmm. tell our viewers who've been with us patiently this whole time. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. We appreciate it very, very much. We're a humble little organization and we're trying to promote um, legal understanding. We're trying to promote moral governance. We're trying to promote rule of law. And Bangladesh Forum for Legal and Humanitarian Affairs as a nonprofit organization, what we work toward is we work towards promoting human rights. We do that, we do that using various mediums. We do it through interactive physical sessions of which Alvivai has also been a keynote speaker of that was organized at Dhaka University. We've held other uh, events such as that. But due to the times we're living in, we're having to uh, hold our, you know, we're having to organize this session, this dialogue on a virtual platform. And I thank each and every one of you on a weekday for being with us, for sticking here. And I want to tell you a little bo bit more about my organization if i'll be please. if you don't mind please please Basil. i'd love to hear more Thank so you. first of all we, i have a co-founder name is sabiha meza bin oshish i'll be by you're familiar with her she's also associated with dlf piper she's a wonderful highly capable lawyer who's going to do great things in life and as a forum what we do is uh we fight for rule of law we promote human rights like i said we articulate legal knowledge and most importantly what we do is we provide preliminary legal aid so in many instances, what happens is people who prefer to remain anonymous, they reach out to us, hey, can we, we need some legal advice, this and that happened against mm -hmm. me, what should I do? 
and see lack of lack of access to justice in bangladesh is a big concern but what is even more concerning for me and for members of this forum is that the lack of adequate legal knowledge that in order to get reparation in order to seek remedy for a crime or or an action that has been perpetrated against you you must first know what your rights are you must first know how you can reach your rights you know what is the method using which you can get towards you know ascertaining your rights so they come to us with their problems and we don't say we provide legal aid we say we provide preliminary legal aid which is which is we provide them with a direction we provide them with very basic legal um recommendations we provide them a direction this and that has been happened with you against you it is like suppose that imamla it is a criminal right. offense that has been perpetrated against you therefore you should be doing this you should go to this police station you should report this to this officer you know that is the kind of legal aid we provide and then we're also work, doing some research work right now i alviva knows about this we're trying to work on a magazine we're trying to uh, mm -hmm. articulate basic legal knowledge we're trying to uh, undertake a campaign where we're what the key focus of that is going to articulate key basic legal knowledge within the masses so in order to protect your rights you must first know your right and that is what bflh is here to do we're here to fight for you know we're here to fight for access to justice we're here to do our part in providing access to justice to as many individuals as we can we're still a young organization we're not even a year old but we are driven we are determined and we are here to help people so everybody who's been here with us everybody leaving wonderful comments everybody who's supporting us like mr alvi hakim right here we're very grateful to you and we thank you very much from the bottom of our heart for your contribution thank you so much and wasif i just want to say that especially the know your rights as you know that one of my one of our projects that won the reuters award in 2018 was called know mm -hmm. your rights so i have mm -hmm. been privileged to have the experience that i have that i've gained in working here but mm -hmm. now i want to implement that in bangladesh so i would be honored to guide you through or whatever you need help help your organization through in setting it up you know and that's my mm -hmm. part of corporate moral responsibility of investing in people like you like the future to take this forward you know and it makes sense in both ways right in in in, mm -hmm. in the future. So, thank you alvivai it will be a wonderful learning opportunity for me to be working with you i know you know i've been looking up to you ever since we were growing <laughs> up so in a professional sphere right. i think it's going to be great learning opportunity for me i want to be a human rights lawyer and you know projects such as that would really nurture me into becoming the best lawyer that i can be absolutely I absolutely and i think you will be i, I you. thank you very much we're going to have to conclude the session for today <laughs> i only borrowed you for an hour and we're two minutes <laughs> overdue already <laughs> but before fine. we do we just want to address last few comments which is from once again from ms tasmiya hak tasmiya apu she said great job boss if thank you tasmiya apu thank you so thank much you, for being here for watching the show all along for asking great constructive questions actually was it one more thing please like our page please follow us one more thing was it yes. if you don't mind that you know how you said you've looked up to yep. me so it's cool i've actually looked up to tasmiya apu because she did law she studied uh, law she was my senior so it's a really good cycle here <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> We don't have many lawyers in our school, but yeah, you know, <laughs> it's great. Thank you for being with us, Tashmi Apu, for Thank taking out the time on a weekday. <laughs> and we're going to conclude this session with one last comment from Mrs. Long, which is, "Thank you, Wasif. Excellent job of chairing the session, and I'm and a very outstanding job of communicating your ideas, Alvi. I'm very proud of both of you. Once Thank again, you. madam, thank you very, very much. Your support you. means a lot to both of us, I'm sure. Yep." <laughs> So on that note, I'll be back. I think we're going to say our goodbye for today, and right. we'll most certainly have him in more of our sessions in the future. So please it follow us, please like channel. our page, stay Thank updated you. with what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you, I'll be back. Thank you, Asif. See you. All right, everybody. Take care. Take care.